All right, good morning again, everyone. Good to see you all here today. Let's turn and go to the book of Proverbs chapter 4 today. We're going to continue in the series of the dynamic wisdom of God. And um, how many of you know that God wants us to use wisdom? Amen? We have an election, I think, the, mo the most important election this country's ever seen. And we have got to have the wisdom of God, um, because when evil persists and good people remain quiet, that's more evil than the evil itself, if you ask me, to, for us to do nothing. So this morning, would you stand with me and go to Proverbs chapter 4? And beginning in verse 4, he's speaking of um, a father speaking to his children. And there in verse 1 it says, my, hear, my, hear my children. So he's saying the instruction of a father. Isn't it nice to know that God likes to, to teach us some things every now and then? Amen? Yeah. Did you know that wisdom is one of the most uh, speak, spoken of topics in the Bible? Proverbs chapters 1 through like 8. Speak of it specifically, and from 8 on to 31, it's referenced back to many times the first 8 to 9 chapters. And so it is spoken of quite, quite vividly even throughout the Bible over in the book of, chapter, uh, of James, chapters 1. You know, if, if anyone is lacking wisdom, let him ask of God. And I have a whole new, fresh new uh, approach to that scripture that I, I'm like, man, how did I miss that all these years? How did we miss that all these years? But I want to read to you in verse 4 after he says to his children, attend to the, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. He says, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Wow. Then he says, get wisdom with an exclamation point in my Bible. And then he says, get wisdom understanding, exclamation point. Get wisdom. He's shouting it. It's how, if, a, if a scripture could shout, that would be it. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget. So he's saying once you get it, don't forget it. Nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you, for wisdom is the principal thing. Say that with me, ready? Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. And she will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory she will deliver to you. That's about all we'll be able to digest today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you today for this message. Thank you for this, these wonderful chapters on wisdom. We thank you, Lord, that not only do you give us what wisdom will do for us, but you tell us what the lack of wisdom will, will happen to us. And so, Lord, we look forward to what you want to say to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Last week, we, we saw when, when it's allowed to, to get into our hearts, when wisdom is allowed to get in our hearts, Wisdom will preserve us. We, we see kind of the same message here, only said a different way. Wisdom will preserve us. That means like a preservative. Salt was used back in that day to preserve meats and, and hides and things like that. It's still used today on, on hides. And then he says to us that allowing understanding to operate in our lives will keep us. We see that again in this scripture here. And lastly, we learned last week that both wisdom and understanding will deliver us from the evil way, from the man who speaks perverse things, and from following the person who leaves the path of righteousness and tries to lead people and pull them away into an evil path. I, that, that's the person that I would not want to be at, judgment, at, at the judgment seat someday, because it's one thing to go yourself. It's another to lead others away. That's right. Listen, here's why. When, when a minister pulls people out of a church to follow him away from another church, when the preacher does it and calls people and tells people, come to my church, come to my church, you want to leave that church and come to with me, 
that preacher then becomes personally responsible as their Messiah. Why is that? Because wisdom tells us you are, you are to be a part of the body that God selects for you. Now, God may release you from a church and move you to another church. He may do that. To, from move, he may say, you know what, it's just time. I need you to move over here and learn something that this church has, that this pastor is teaching. I need you to move. Don't be a moveaholic, okay? Hello? Don't be a moveaholic. Get somewhere and stay. And if God plants you there, then you ought to say, thank you, Lord. I found the right place. I'm in the right place. But when, when someone takes someone, as, as we just learned in wisdom there, and, and says, you know what? I'm taking you away from the path that God has for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says that God places each one of us in the body just as he pleases with the best adaptation. So you're here because God placed you here, and you're adapted to be here, you're a part of this thing, and God has calibrated your heart, your mind, your soul, everything to be in this body. And when he moves you, you'll know it. Amen? You'll know it. Not because someone says, "Come, won't you come with me? Or a window opens and you leave, but because we listen to the... Listen, the devil can open doors and windows too. And he can pull you out of the place you're supposed to be because he knows what you get there will overcome him. He wants you in a different church so you won't be able to overcome him. Hello? Yeah. All right. And I'm saying, hey, there's lots of good churches out there, but there's one church for each one of us. When God moved us here, I knew it. I knew it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so did Julie. She confirmed it. So what is kind of the, the definition of, of wisdom? I, I believe that, we, and we learned this last week, wisdom is a keen sense of perception, a keen sense of perception that is calibrated by information. Did you get that? A keen sense of perception. You see things differently through the eyes of wisdom. I say to people all the time, there's, there's nothing I can't learn from somebody else. I want to hear. I want to learn. And I need to be able to go and, and sit and under other teaching and other training and learn some things and, and, and pull that wisdom in. And so to know what those details are will then lead you to the ability to not only discern, but have depth of perception in your spiritual walk with Christ. And so understanding then, if we're going to get wisdom and get understanding, we, we, if we're going to get wisdom, we're going to get a keen perception. That, that we are to retain, the author says. And then, if we're going to get understanding, understanding is the ability to gather the information and then have the perception that correlates with the wisdom on how to apply. Understanding says, yeah, I, I understand the, the, the topic, but, but I, I have the wisdom, excuse me, I have the wisdom for the topic, but I don't know how it applies. There have been many times I've had the wisdom for something. I say, now, Lord, you know, I, I, I don't understand. And so sometimes we'll miss it with God because we don't wait on God for the wisdom of God to come into place where the understanding of God can work with the wisdom of God because they work together. They discern together. They become discreet together. And so wisdom tells us that, that here's the perception you're supposed to have. It's, you've, you're, you're, you're wise beyond your years, but you don't know how to do it. You can speak it, you can say it, but you don't seem to do it. And that's because people stop at the wisdom. Yeah, I, I understand all that. I get it. But pastor, I have to pray about if I'm supposed to serve in children's church or not. Well, are you serving now? No. Probably because you're praying about being an usher, and you're praying about being a greeter, and you're praying if you should be a parking lot attendant. You're praying about those things. And see, when you start serving, serving will move you in your wisdom and your understanding, even in a parking lot attendant. Did you hear that, church? It will grow. Why? Because you become a servant of God. He's going to say, oh, I, I, you're with us. You're going. Let's do this. And so... Wisdom and understanding work together. Number one, wisdom. Wisdom refers to our ability to observe, gain insight, and then discern in order to devise a plan or make a decision 
regarding a situation or set of circumstances. Did you get that? We are to, to, to ref, it refers to our ability, and every one of us has the ability, but we're supposed to observe. Wisdom means you've observed. You've shut down your mouth and you've listened. You've shut down all the, the things that will cause your focus to go away. You've moved the things aside that have been old perceptions. Did you hear that? Oh, pastor, we've always done it this way. I'll always be this way. I, I've been an alcoholic my whole life. I'll be an alcoholic till I die. Why would you say that? Yeah, let the wisdom of God come in and push out the wisdom of dumb. Amen? Amen? I didn't know there was such a thing until just a second ago. (laughs) But wisdom and understanding are things that only you can get. Now bear with me. Come on, go a little deeper with me. Ever say a little deeper. deeper. Wisdom and understanding are things that only you can get for you. It's okay. The Bible says there's, there's wisdom in the counsel of many. I get it. There's also wisdom in reading books and reading the Word of God. Reading an, an author, a Christian author on a topic that you're looking for wisdom on. I, I mean, I've got hundreds of books on my shelf that I've read to get the wisdom of God on something and say, I want to hear what another man or woman of God has to say about that topic. I want to hear what they say. And, and it begins to open up things. And so, you see, wisdom and understanding are things that only you can get for you. I can't be there with you on every decision. Your mom and dad can't be there with you on every decision. You're going to have to grow up and make wise decisions because you're getting it. Someone else can teach you. They can show you. They can even tell you what it is. But only you can actually get wisdom and understanding for you. Amen. So for spiritual wisdom and understanding can only come from God. That spiritual wisdom and understanding can only come from God as revealed by His Holy Spirit. And what's He going to reveal? He's always going to be revelation from the Word of God. they're, they're, They're intertwined. The Word of God is the wisdom of God. And then we understand by the Spirit of God how to how to understand it. And we we then understand by the Spirit of God when, how. You see, you can speak the truth in love and have the wisdom on how to speak to somebody in love. But love also says what we miss sometimes is, is the timing right? Hello? It's, there's probably some times where it's inappropriate to tell someone the truth, even though you tell them that because you love them. There's probably a better time than what you might want to tell them. And sometimes we just say, I just got to tell them. I just got to say it. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes it'll be real embarrassing when somebody says something that's inappropriate. And it happens. It happens sometimes. And as a pastor, sometimes I just want to say, would you please just stop? Because you're not speaking the truth because it's not truthful because the timing is out. The way, the presentation, that's come with the wrong spirit then it's, it's not wisdom. Hello? Are you here this morning? So wisdom and understanding can only come from God as revealed by His Spirit. And they come into your heart. That, that wisdom, both of them, wisdom and understanding, when I say they, wisdom and understanding working together in your life. And, and there'll be times, church, where you're using wisdom more than you are understanding because God will, always will use wisdom to get out ahead of understanding. You've got to learn the information before you can learn the understanding of how to apply it. If he gives you the how to apply it first, you're going to be going like, what what, what is going on here? And sometimes it's our own fault because God will have given us the wisdom and then we're not listening because we're looking for the application of what we want and then we'll misapply. So you have to be listening to God. Listening prayer is a powerful part of your life. It should be the time where you say, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to keep quiet and sit before you. I was doing that yesterday at a shooting event. I was um, at a mounted shooting event, and there was time where, now that I'm not the, the, the captain of the, of the club, so to speak, the president of the club, um, I, I just go to my truck and just go over my sermon while I'm waiting for other people to compete. 
Plus, I don't want to see them compete. I want to go out and do my best. Yesterday, I was three one hundredths of a second out of first place. It was like that. I look back at my videos and just one hesitation of my mare or, or me hesitating, not holding her back or something, just that fast. Just. But so I'll go out to my pickup and I'll just have my Bible open. I'll leave it there. And yesterday I, I left it sitting on the console open and, it, and it, even it ministered to people when they walked by. Someone said to me, hey, did you know you left your Bible out on the console of your truck? I was like, yeah, I know. I'm studying my sermon. Oh, cool. What are you studying? And I got to share with somebody what I was studying. Just the Bible hanging out and people walking by my truck on their way into the, to the arena to go shoot. Amen? The Bible speaks. Say that with me. Ready? The Bible speaks. It's loud. So the, the wisdom and understanding will come into your heart through your mind as you study the Word. We talked about that last week. You've got to let it get past the, the filter of the thought and then get it into your heart. Now, for wisdom to be able to work in, our, in your life, what you read has to make sense to you. It has to make sense. It has to make sense bringing understanding and ultimately application. Turn with me quickly to Nehemiah chapter 8. I want, I want you to see this quickly. Nehemiah chapter 8. It says in verse 8, Nehemiah 8, 8. Are you finding it? It's, if you find Ezra, you're close to Nehemiah. They work together. It says in verse 8, So they read distinctly from the book of the law of God, and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. You see, people were taking the law and saying it. It's too hard to go to church. It's too hard to, to honor the Sabbath. It's too hard. All this law stuff, we can't do it. And they were basically slaves at the time working on, on rebuilding Jerusalem. Nehemiah says, I have a sword in one hand and I have, I have a brick and laying brick in the other hand. But they stopped and they said, we need to honor God and let's read the book of the law. And then it says in verse 10, then he said to them, go your way and eat the fat. Drink and drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. That's not really physically eating something. That's, he is saying what you learned will cause you to grow strong spiritually. It's spiritual food for you because he just left verse 8 and he said we gave them the sense. Now he says now take what you've got and feed it to someone else. Isn't that evangelism 101? Amen. And so he says do not mourn, don't weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Verse 10, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Say those words with me. Ready? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. When the word of God is understood and known, and you have wisdom, you begin to say, Now I know how to apply it. Now I have the answers to life. I can't be fooled. I won't be deceived. I'm going to know how to put the Word of God in my life and make right application. Now, reading on, he says, So the Levites quieted all the people. Verse 11. He said, Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that were declared to them. They understood. The words that were declared. Oh, I love to see it on the face of a Christian. Just even during the preaching, where someone will be, they'll be taking in the message and pretty soon they're like, hmm, I get it. And they'll link them. Hey, what do you think? And they're like, they're getting it. They're getting it. Now he says something very important here in chapter 4. He says, let, verse 4, let your heart retain my words. Remember, it's got to get to the heart. And that's where we want to retain it. We want it to get into the soul, the spirit, past the mind, past the filter, as we learned last week, and, and get down in so that it passes through the filter appropriately and it gets into our heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We know that. 
But listen to this. He says in verse 4, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. If you keep them, everybody say keep them. See, if we keep them, that's when we live. And that word is, is uh, I believe it's Zoe, the, the life of God, the, the God, the God kind of life. And so he, he says it's going to be a different kind of life that you'll live with. You'll live under the supernatural leading of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. Now in verse 4 he says, keep my commands and live. But verse 5 says, get wisdom and get understanding. Do you know you've been getting wisdom and getting understanding in a physical realm your entire life? No one has to tell you if you go out to the parking lot, if you're an adult anyway, young people might not know this yet. I think even they do because they've seen you correct the situation. But if you go out to the parking lot and you see your car kind of leaning back at the back side on the right, on the right hand rear, you're probably going to go over there and go, what's going on over here? Oh, I got a flat tire. No one says, ah, let's just go on it. <laughs> Why? Wisdom tells you don't do that. Right. Why? Because the time you did, you ruined the tire. And then you got to spend X amount of hundreds of dollars on a new tire. Hello? Or if you're like me, you're too cheap. I just go to you know, Big Deal Tire and Wheel and they put a used one on. I try, and they're really good to me down there. They'll match a tire for you and they'll put a used one on, charge you a percentage of what a brand new one would be. And you don't know the difference, you know? And the other yeah, great Christian men down there. And, they love the Lord with all their heart, so a little pump there for all them guys down there. But look what he says. He says, retain my wisdom. You're not going to drive that car with a flat tire because the last time you did that, sidewalls, you've learned, are not made for weight-bearing. They have to be pumped up. We're here to pump you up. <laughs> Amen. And once you get those sidewalls pumped up, now they've got strength. They can hold, if they're, if they're upright, they don't wear very well if they're downright or down wrong. Amen? If they're flat, you're going to go thum, 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 all the way home. And then when the tire finally comes off, you're on, a, you're on a rim. And if you go very far on that rim, you ruin the rim. It won't hold a tire anymore. So now you ruin the whole thing. That's, that's, you see, a father that sees that come home just shakes his head and says, oh, my God. <laughs> Amen? No one has to say to you if poison is set out and when you see a little poisonous skeleton on there, no one has to say to you, oh, don't drink that. You put it away so little kids won't get into it and drink it. You put safety on cabinet doors, safety latches so they don't get into that stuff because you might need it as a cleansing chemical, but you don't have to tell them, don't drink that poison. Because you know that if they drink it, they'll die. The, the, the other illustration I'll give you is no one has to tell you after a while, help me out here now, if you don't take care of your teeth, you'll get cavities. <laughs> and after enough of that, you'll say, I'm going to brush and, and floss. And when you go in the next time, you bl brushed and you flossed, they'll say, hmm, you're taking care of your teeth. I had another cap fall off the other day. <laughs> I was chewing gum and all of a sudden it just came out. But that's all right. So I'm without a cap right now. I feel a little you know, naked without my cap on, you know. <laughs> Kidding you. But retain his words. You see, likewise, I don't need anyone to tell me, spend time in the word, in prayer, and listening to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I remember the times when I got down the road without God, and I needed something from Him, and He says, I'm not there, I'm over here. If you'd have been listening to me, I'd be over, you'd be over here with me. Hello? So I don't need to, to I see, have seen the spiritual decay in my life. And when I stay away from the word of God, the old Rick starts to decay again. And instead, I go back to the word. Why? To be renewed. To renew my mind. To renew my mind to the life that I have in Christ. The liberty that I have because he died on the cross for me. The freedom that I have to be me and not be encumbered and tied down with a weight that so easily ensnares us and destroys us. That decay happens quickly if you don't get back to the word of God. 
Young people, go to the Word as much as you can. Why? Because without it, spiritual decay occurs. It will decay in your marriage, in your life, in your job, your career, your business, if you don't keep God first. And that spiritual decay, it takes a lot to get it out. You've got to be numbed up. You've got to be drilled out. You've got to be replaced with brand new. And after a while, they just say, we're going to yank that thing and put something else in there. And you look like you played hockey. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? All right. So, wisdom does us no good if we don't retain it. When we cease to retain, we lose the ability to understand the deeper things of God. Amen? So, when you violate godly wisdom, there's going to be consequences. Did you hear that, church? You, you might get away with not tithing your whole life, you think you get away. But when the end comes, you might get to heaven and God says, you never tithed. Here's all the people that could have been ministered to by your tithe. And you chose to eat your tithe and keep your tithe and hold on to it. So therefore, the rest of the body was hampered. These people now, I put it in someone else's heart to give. And they're getting the blessing of the soul winner's crown. You see, church? When we give to God with a generous spirit, it's wise. It's wise to obey Malachi 3. It's wise to be a tither. I asked a cowboy yesterday who is, um, he's in the assemblies and, and he's a youth pastor right now. And, and he told me a couple months ago, I'm, I'm, looks like I'm going to you know, be an interim pastor for my church. Our senior pastor left and they, they've asked me to take the pulpit and interim wise. And now he, he told me last shoot, he said they, they've asked me to, to put my hat in the, the ring, so to speak, to be the senior pastor. And I said, do you feel like you're capable of doing that? And he says, yeah. And we, so we had a good counsel. So isn't God at work all the time? I mean, I, that's why a lot of times why I go to these things is because I get to minister to people. And, and so I, we stopped right then and there, and I prayed for Jesse and, and, um, and asked the Lord to give him wisdom because you, you'll arrive at a point someday, and here's the words that came out of his mouth. He said, I was happy being a youth pastor. And he says, God kept putting it in my heart about a year ago to pray about being a senior pastor, and I rejected it because I didn't want it. And now the opportunity is here. And I'm not prayed up enough. He says, Pastor Rick, would you pray with me real quick? You see, it's important to obey the word of God. Amen? Obey the, the wisdom of God. Because there's no greater power known to man than God's anointing. There's no greater. But I promise you, as I said last week, the anointing must be handled in the wisdom of God. You might be anointed to take a pulpit as a pastor, but you may not have the wisdom to stay in the, in the pulpit, and you'll fizzle out quickly. The person that fizzles out quickly that says, I'm going to be a pastor and then doesn't go fulfill it, is someone that probably was called, but didn't allow the wisdom to lead them. See, listen, the, God will not send you He'll, the love of God will send you, but the wisdom of God will keep you. The love of God will say, you can do all things. You can love all these. But unless the wisdom of God anoints you with on how to love them. I can love you, brother, with the love of God. But if I don't love you the right way, that you need to be loved as your pastor. If I love you in the things that God appoints me to encourage you in. I'm missing it as your pastor. And it's the same way, dads. Dads, we should be, in, be prayed up about the wisdom of God because each child is different. I promise you. Brian and Sheila, will, they'll tell you. Brandon's different than Jared. Julie will tell you. Candace is different than Ricky. And Crystal's different than all of them. She just shows up and she can do anything. She can ride anything, like equine. I mean, there's nothing she can't ride. Nothing. All the other ones get on and fall off. But she just rides anything. She's, she's just gifted and talented because she learns and then she does. She'll learn and do, learn and do. And, and we all need to do that. But if you have a lack of wisdom, then you'll mishandle things, dads and moms. Moms, you're, you operate in wisdom probably the best of, of all of us. And, and next week, you know, you, you, it's Mother's Day. Man, bring your, your moms to church, guys and gals. Bring, and enjoy. Let her do what she wants to do. That's her day. But gifts won't flow correctly. 
And I'm not just talking about a gift of someone that gets in the pulpit. I'm, I'm talking about in your actual life where the gifts of the Spirit need to operate. A gift of a word of knowledge for your child as they're going out the door. Say to them, hey, you know what? I just feel like this about you. You know, if you experience something difficult, here's, God, I'm going to speak this over you. I'm going to pray this over you. I'm going to bless you with this. Don't be afraid to do that. Because it's, it's that, that wisdom of God that comes upon you. Now, I want to get to a stopping point here. So if someone who's coming to play for me, that would be great. But you'll recognize a deeper degree of anointing when you get wisdom and get understanding. You'll, you'll see that there's a, different, a deeper calling on your life when you begin to get the wisdom of God and the understanding then to discern to understand it, a keen perception, and then you begin to say, okay, I can do that. I'll put my foot on the right spot. Because if I put my foot somewhere else, I might dash it against a stone and get hurt. I might not be able to overcome that where I dash my foot against a stone. And so wisdom begins with getting wisdom. The, the amplified version says it this way. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. Isn't that wisdom? The beginning of wisdom is getting wisdom. It's skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. The Amplified, I love it, because it, it, it gives us that little deeper some other words that, that help us attract to the word wisdom and attract to the word understanding. So as we look at that, the beginning of wisdom, which is a keen understanding, the ability to process information and, and retain it and hold on to it, because if we lose it, we start to decay. So wisdom is, the beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom and retain it and keep it. And then as we look here in Proverbs chapter 4, and verse 6, it says, do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Have you ever been forsaken by somebody? It hurts, doesn't it? You find out they stabbed you in the back and said something behind your back, or maybe you found out that they aren't quite the friend that you thought they were. It's a forsaking of a friendship. It's a forsaking of a relationship. And wisdom, I think a spirit of wisdom wants us to not forsake her, and if we don't, she'll always come back to us. But, and I don't want you to think of a spirit of wisdom as a, as a person or anything, but kind of a, a spirit that we sit under of, I'm going to obey the Spirit of God because He is a person. As He reveals to me a spirit of understanding, to do some things that I'm supposed to do, a place I'm supposed to be where God has called me to be. And I'm not going to go there and complain about it because if God's got you to, at a job and you say, I hate my job, look around and say, but are there people here I could reach? Now all of a sudden wisdom's going to talk. Wisdom's going to speak. And as it speaks, it will tell you things like, if you exalt her, speaking of wisdom, and you prize wisdom highly, the Amplified Version says this, prize wisdom highly and exalt her and she will exalt and promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. And that's in verse 8. And you see, she'll, she wants to promote you. You know, there's, there comes a time where you say, I just bump into a, a, a like solid steel. And I can't get past it in my prayer language, Pastor. There might be some things that you're not operating in wisdom in. And so God's going to say to you, until you apply that wisdom and do the understanding part, I can't release anything else to you. Because it'll be a hiccup. You'll, you'll, you'll misrepresent something. You'll mishandle something. You won't present it correctly. And so I got to wait till you get the, the wisdom on that with the balance of understanding. Because it's, it's that application that's so important in your life. Some people get happy feet and want to just run all over and do all kinds of crazy things. And maybe God is just saying, you know, sit still. Sit still. Sometimes pastors of other pastors have left their church and want to come here and be a part of things. And I've said, okay, that's fine. But you need to sit under my authority. 
for an undetermined amount of time because I want you to catch the vision and the wisdom and the understanding and how we do things here. And you need to sit and be quiet and learn from God what didn't happen there so you don't bring it here. Hello? As your pastor, I'm, I'm shepherding you. I'm, I'm protecting my flock. And a lot of times, you know, they'll come in and be quiet and learn and grow and then God will call them somewhere else. But sometimes this becomes a sending place because the wisdom of God and the understanding of God is taught here so that you can be well taught and well learned and well applied so that those things happen in your life. And so this morning, as, as we prize wisdom highly, I like that. Prize wisdom highly and exalt her. Keep her prized. Keep her first in your life. Keep that wisdom flowing in your life because what is prized more highly in your life than wisdom will be what takes you away from the wisdom of God. It will take you away. And lastly, the blessings of God. They're a product of they're a product of the wisdom and understanding of God at work. Just as the conductor of an orchestra conducts each, each section of the orchestra to make a, a, a pleasing sound, so likewise the wisdom of God, the anointing of God, all work together as conducted by the Holy Spirit to bring forth the blessings of God in our lives. I'm going to be talking in a couple of weeks about not being afraid to ask God for a blessing. Because you're in that place where you say, you know what? I... I'm learning the wisdom of God. But Lord, I, I need understanding. And then pretty soon you get to that place where you're maturing. And really, remember, maturity is not measured by success. Maturity is measured by God, by your obedience. He measures maturity by your willingness to obey him to say yes Lord I'll obey you and so as you, would you stand with me can't you just see wisdom taking her little orchestra stick and tick, 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 to your life and all the while looking at the Holy Spirit looking at the Father saying now is the time is now the time? And, and pretty soon, off goes the drums. Boom. Brings the excitement of something to change in life. In the background, you hear the tinkle of the chime. Ting, 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 ting. And the trumpets kick up. And up they come. And pretty soon you're like, Pomp and circumstance is coming. I'm being promoted. Did you hear that? Promotion day. You move from a place because the orchestra, the, the conductor says, it's time for you to play first chair. It's time for me to work in your life a little bit more. And so he says, move up to the first chair in the orchestra. And then he looks to you as the first trumpet or the first clarinet, the first violinist, the first drummer, the first saxophone. And we together as a body began to work with the wisdom of God and each one of us obeying when to come in, not being too loud and saying, well, I'm the trumpet. I just want to blare all the time by myself. Amen? No, you, you got to follow the conductor who is wisdom and she holds her baton and says now is done and everybody stops because the stopping of all that was put together is rewarded with the father saying well done well done my good and faithful servant you see that's when we know that when we get to heaven and he says well done that we was that that instrument of wisdom in God's hand don't you love God's word don't you love just turning there and looking at it and saying man let's, let's chew on that for a while and wisdom just brings out so much stuff in us 
Bow your heads and close your eyes. Is there anyone here that says, Pastor, I need prayer today. Pray for me this morning and, and we'll pray for you. Is there anyone at all that says, Pastor, I need prayer. Thank you, sweetheart. Anybody else? I feel a need to pray for people today over here on my left. Thank you, sir. Anybody else today? Slip up your hand in the back over here. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you on the back row. I see both of those hands. Anybody else today? We're going to pray for people. If you need the Lord to touch your life, maybe you've, you've stepped away and there's spiritual decay in your life. Is there anyone here that say, Pastor, there's been some decay. I've stepped away from God. I need to get it right with Him this morning. That's me. I've got decay. I need to have a cavity filled. Anyone at all that would slip up your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. It's been tough I'm trying to serve God. I, I'm being perplexed by some things. I'm going to look one more time. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, son. Hallelujah. Good for you. Thank you in the back. Thank you. Heavenly Father, as we close this service, we just pray in Jesus' name that you touch every single person that raised their hand. Lord, they raised their hand because they need help. They need, they need prayer. And so, Lord, we know that you said to pray even though you know everything that's going to happen and you, you're going to still work in their life. But, Lord, you said to pray because I believe that it shows that, that maturity, that we're obeying you. And it also shows that, Lord, we're earnest about having you work in our life. And so, Lord, I just join with these people that pray, that raise their hand for prayer. I also, Lord, I pray for the person who maybe has some spiritual decay in their life. May they say a prayer out of their heart, out of the abundance of their heart that says, Lord, I, I ask you to cleanse me of my sin, forgive me of my past, to help me to step through that, Lord, and to follow you. And, and, and Lord, forgive me for my past. And may they, Lord, also then leave it behind and step into what you have for them in their life. We thank you for this day, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, don't forget our prayer counselors are up here. To walk out that door and just not have prayer for you when it's available, you're missing out on a, on a wonderful act of obedience in God. God bless you. Have a great day.